Hi and welcome to Blue Pigment Podcast. This podcast is to help highlight the individuals that express themselves through creativity. I'm talking about audio forms of art such as poetry, music, singing, comedy or even storytelling. The podcast usually follows a format where I introduce you to an artist and their creative way of expressing themselves. We then move on to a few adverts which you may want to pay attention to because there could be a discount code in it for you. From there, the majority of the podcast is a discussion with a guest on a form of art and the way in which they express themselves through that creativity. I hope you enjoy the podcast. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. The Heroes Once Beside Me by John Parker The Heroes Once Beside Me Unless you've lived in war, the true feeling can't be shown. Yet I'll tell you what I can of the heroic deeds I've known. A hail of bullets raining down, yet cower he did not. Bravely he kept the jimpy going, only stopped by fatal shot. Move into the enemy home to wait with rockets in the morn. Then patiently we draw them as they ambush us at dawn. They attack us from the front, they attack us from the rear. Two shots forward, two behind, as peel right is all we hear. A section moving forward when there came a mighty blast. The dead that stunned the injured the whole section to the last. Yet to see the grit and courage, his will you could not break or bend. Though wounded, he still fought on to carry injured friends. A lone man fixes bayonet, who was a father to those men. Breaches clean and exits blood drenched. Only he knows what happened then. One by one across the river to take the Taliban by surprise. At dawn, we blow their wall down and they can't believe their eyes. The enemy keep coming on and on throughout the day. The gun he keeps on firing then says I've killed enough today. All down on their buckles, as low as we can get. One man stands with hell around him, saying, I'm not ready yet. This man refused to leave, to fight and lead the men. The likeness of this man could never see again. While all the men are low, the javelin keeps on firing. A hero seen that day, to all who saw, inspiring. Not a thought about himself, he fired and fired the missiles fast, launching rocket after rocket, until we saw him fire his last. The enemy keep coming, we're close to being overrun. So we call in danger close from the 105 light gun. The sound and fire shocking as each falls blast after blast until the enemy stopped coming, destroyed until the last. Men moving in the open, no smoke to be obtained. Throw the foss, it falls too close and we feel that fiery rain. After a hard day's fighting, the top order further to go. Steo's answer was surprising when on the radio he said no. These are just a few short moments, the facts to never be denied me. Because I never will forget those heroes once beside me. Hello, everyone. You're listening to Blue Pigment Podcast. If you want to become a patron of this show, please go to patreon.com forward slash blue pigment. You will be helping me help the talent that I find along the way. Not only that, the podcast is an advocate for mental health and the positive message in which we want to send about mental health. So if you are a bit about that and you want to jump on board then please become a patron at patreon.com forward slash blue pigment uh would love to have you on board and not only that uh, you'll get the chance to get some free stuff and be giving another big giveaway soon to find out what it is go to patreon.com forward slash blue pigment become a patron and get yourself some free stuff Blue Pigment Podcast is sponsored by Huskarl. Go to huskarl.co.uk and use the discount code BLUEPIGMENT for 15% off. Get yourself some t-shirts, stickers, baseball caps, hoodies, printouts and many more products from Huskarl. Blue Pigment Podcast, sponsored by Huskarl. Today I'm joined by Lewis, he's an ex-commando engineers. He's now since left the forces and is a personal trainer and coach. Um, I'm going to now hand over to to Lewis to continue the introduction of himself. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah, so uh, I had a 13-year career um, and decided to get out and go go full-time in strength conditioning coaching um, right, right before the pandemic, which... Uh, not ideal. However, it, it forced me to 
to adapt and grow my business straight away um, into the online um, place. So now I'm predominantly an online coach and in person I coach high level pro athletes. So um, at the moment it's Dorking Wanderers Football Club and Dennis McCann, uh, boxer. And then the rest of my time is spent dedicated to, to men, like helping them build a, a robust mind, strong body, so they can, they can make more of their life and they can just go and accomplish some of those kind of pipe dreams, those back burner goals that I feel a lot of men crave, but never create the time or space to go and achieve them. That's where I come in to, to help actually implement the, those big things they want to achieve. You mentioned the football team there um, and, and the mm -hmm. boxers and the boxer. What uh, sort of coaching do you give them uh, in, in terms of, is it nutrition yeah. and exercise? So with, with Dennis, it's his strength conditioning. Um, so it's, it's not his nutrition. With boxing, with the weight cutting protocols and the nutrition side of things that go into it, um, it's almost a full-time job in itself. And he has one of the world's best um, looking after that for him. So luckily I don't have to deal with that because there's a lot of stress when it comes to making weight because that can make or break a fight. Um, so for me, it's about his strength, it's about his power, it's about his, his capacity uh, to keep going and working alongside his boxing coaches because clearly the most important aspect for a boxer is his ability to box. Um, so therefore, for me, I see my role as staying in touch with his boxing trainers and then essentially filling in the gaps based on their feedback. So there's a lot of two-way communication there. And then with Dorkin, that's, I'm essentially like the high performance coach there for the club. So that is their recovery, their nutrition. It's getting lads back to fitness once they've gone through their rehab. It's the warm-ups on match days, the cool downs. It's kind of everything away from the football. And then it's almost like consulting the manager on what I think is the best thing for him to do from a fitness perspective of, of, of the player, as opposed to his performance, his ability on the ball, just based on what I see and, and the conversations we have. Um, if someone's like got an illness, got a, got a niggle, or they're just not where they should be, because a lot of their data is monitored through um, like the GPS vest they wear and, and all that stuff. So it's quite analytical. Um, but yeah, both very, very um, satisfying jobs and the opportunities that come from them is, yeah, second to none. I, I love working with, with both of those. And I only keep it at the two of them because to take on more would, it would just take too much of my time and energy. And then I just feel like I'd deliver a subpar service to them. Yeah. With that analytics, you've got the, you know, with the analytical uh, information you're gaining on them, knowing them personally because you have a small um, clientele and uh, personalizing their training, like customized training to those individuals is obviously what's going to be best for uh, those individuals. And I know obviously being X forces, if you went back to when you're in the forces, the fitness that was done was very generalized, you know, they're, they're mm. back in, you know, especially, you know, going back a few years, it was very much, this is the fitness standard, this is fitness test, you've got to pass this, even though that particular fitness event or thing might not be what's required to get that person at the best of their standard for their role or opportunity. Whereas yours is custom designed for a football player, custom designed for the boxer um, to get the best out of themselves. Uh, that's, that's, that's really cool. Like um, using analytics to, to to maximize that effect uh, but it, with that and you, you that's obviously building up their body you mentioned uh, or we mentioned before that your aim is to uh, build their robust mind and, and body um, what's the methods in which you build a robust mind is it through adversity and uh, and through the training that you put them through to encourage their mental strength yeah so so elite mindset compelling purpose and self-awareness are my kind of three branches to to mental toughness um so so forging that elite mindset that comes down to the way they think the way they act so it's 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 
using logic rather than emotion to, to respond to a situation. Um, I think the easiest way to describe this is, is when you're stuck in traffic, because it's something that everyone can relate to. And traffic is never your fault. Like, and there's rarely ever, rarely any, rarely ever anything you can do about it. But if you haven't, if you're running late because of the traffic, or if you're losing your head because someone's just cut you up, like that says a lot about you as a person. Whereas actually, like that's very, that's a very emotional reaction that you're that you're doing there. That's achieve, that's achieving nothing. And then what tends to happen from there? So let's just say, like hypothetically, you're going into work, you get stuck in traffic, and then you're late, and then you get into the office, and then you taking that anger out on everyone else around you all of a sudden like it's your days compounding negatively based on the way you reacted to something completely out of your control so the what i like to do is is just create that that awareness in that situation so this is where they all tie in together create that awareness in the situation that well, what can i do about this nothing okay so watch like just sit back chill put a podcast on, put, put a radio on, like the, you can't change anything that's just happened. So therefore like just use logic to respond to the situation as opposed to emotion. And then all of a sudden, like you, then things will compound positively for you because your energy is in a different place. Your head's in a different place. The decisions you make are much better. So then if we take that onto the football pitch or into the boxing ring and the referee puts a decision against you, happened to us at the weekend, we drew two all, um, we scored two goals that are offside. On reflection, when we review the footage, both goals are onside. So actually, we should have won four two. Um, but in the moment, like we can do nothing. Like the ref is never going to change his mind. So it's about getting that into the players' heads because then, if we use that 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 traffic example, if the players are now responding with emotion negatively towards a referee, and then all of a sudden, like the ball comes in and there's a 50-50 tackle. And they attack that aggressively in a, in a in an erratic mindset. Now all of a sudden they've got a red card. So not only have you had a goal disallowed, you now lost a bloke. And it's like, so it, it's being able to control your emotion using logic. And then in most situations, positive things are only going to come from that. Yeah, it's that snowball effect, isn't it? It's it's when uh, mm. someone cut you, like you're saying about the traffic situation, someone cuts you up. Uh, there's no parking at the parking wherever it is you're going to park. You start getting that het up energy and that anger and that negative energy. And I suppose it comes with wisdom. And it's it's the message I suppose you're trying to say is to to try and inject that wisdom early. You know, something that mm. may somebody would experience over time and become wise to it, uh, and inject that into young, fit, athletic, you know, people that if they had the athleticism that they have, but they also had the wisdom of a you know an older person that put those two together and you've got the perfect athlete that is able to respond with their emotions you know not uh not denying their emotion but with the emotion they're having mm. and use utilizing it to the best of best of the effect um and yeah I, I imagine that was super frustrating for the referee to say these two goals aren't allowed but mm. then and it, it's so easily done that frustration becomes you yeah and you've got to but, you've got to keep it in check what's, what, what's important with it as well though is it's accepting that like we never complete this like this isn't something that we'll we'll ever be perfect that there will always be times where you're you'll you'll respond with emotion over logic um and and the more i'm learning the more i'm coming to see that actually it's stuff outside of our performance arena where we're most vulnerable to this. So stuff like traffic is the simple things or like your kid throwing a car and putting it through the telly, like stuff like in the moment where you're not thinking about it, it's like, and you just, you just lose your head. Whereas actually in, when it becomes to being in your environment, so, so soldiers are excellent at this when, when you're deployed and um, like back to the Afghan days, you come under contact or whatever, like there tends to be, a lot of cool heads and there's a lot of right decisions that are made um, because that's our performance arena. Like that is where we're trained and that is where we practice uh, yeah. um, on exercise and then obviously um, onto operations. But then when something happens where you're not switched onto it at home, in the car or whatever, 
this is where I'm seeing people actually are, are more volatile. And the way, the way we kind of get better across the board, I believe, is like periods of, of reflection after we've messed up. So like once we've, once we've gone through something and we realize actually, no, I didn't handle that very well. It's taking that time to sit back and reflect and go, yeah, like almost like an after action review. Yeah, I messed up there. If I'd have done A, B, C instead of one, two, three, like maybe things would have been different. And it's like, okay, like that's now noted. So now we're building that self-awareness. The next time it happens, rather than rather than losing your head, you're like, last time I lost my head here and nothing good come of it. Let's try this. And then we start to build that toolbox of, of um, like mental frameworks that we can take ourselves through, mental models we can take ourselves through when we're caught off guard. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. You said about, obviously, you were talking about Afghanistan, go back to that. Mm. It's like under the most dramatic conditions, like there's all hell is broken loose, the most dramatic things are happening in, in around you. Soldiers tend to be very no drama no dramatics no no nothing you know just utter professionalism yeah but then when it comes to something when you're back home and it's very trivial and you flow wobbly like it becomes really dramatic because you're not in your your yeah you're not in the you're not in the same you're not in the right zone and but to bring in that sort of that same professionalism into everyday life and holding yourself accountable to your actions and and your emotions and not deny like you're saying not denying yourself those emotions but like back to afghan you can't have those emotions no so when you're in the uk and you're in a safe environment you can have those emotions but just keep them in check you know recognize when you're getting angry when you get frustrated or you know these things are starting to pop up and that's a, a, a excellent way to if you can take charge of that day-to-day -day life when it comes to being effective on a sports pitch or in a, an arena or in a boxing, you know, match, you're going to be the best person in that, in that ring, or that you're going to be the best people on that pitch because you are utterly got that you've got your shit together. Yeah. yeah. So that's your message. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Working on the body, working on the mind. So yeah. It's good. Also though, it, it's, it's personal and professional standards. So, so I feel when we're, when we're, deployed and we're in uniform like we have that professional standard like there's just there's the person that we become and there's these kind of rules and guidelines we abide by because we're there to do a job whereas when we step out of that and we step into normal clothes and something happens all of a sudden like our personal standards tend to, like there could be an indifference between them and i think it's it's knowing your personal standards like i'm going to eat high quality food i'm going to get high quality sleep i'm going to drink lots of water i'm going to move every day like when we have those personal standards in line with our professional standards like we just become better humans yeah yeah definitely i think you are the best version you know if you if you strive to be the best version of yourself you will be the best version of yourself if yeah. you if you know that there are things that you could be doing better but you you wanted a lazy day and you're sat watching Netflix eating chocolate and crisps, you're you're gonna become that person that sits around and mm. just is lazy. And it's like we are inherently as humans, like we need struggle. We need things to to keep us on our toes. Because if we don't, we start getting depressed, anxiety, uh, you know, all these all these negative energies start encroaching on our lives. So keeping that positive attitude, that positive um, physical activity going is a uh, is the right thing that we should all be doing on a regular basis. I'm not saying that's me. I'm not saying that I do that every day, mm -hmm. but uh, and and sometimes having that break is necessary. But mm -hmm. again, that's another thing you have to keep in check that you don't get comfortable um, being lazy. Yeah, yeah. That that ties into the third branch of my. Uh, mental toughness model which is which is compelling purpose and for me so i call them big scary goals um for me having that compelling purpose having that big scary goal that is your north star that you're striving for 
as long as it's big enough, as long as it's scary enough, and as long as it's the type of thing that you're genuinely driven by, it's going to force you to, to take action and it's going to force you to be the person that you want to become, as opposed to when you don't have that, that compelling purpose. And we tend to get a little bit wayward. So for me, um, I, I set a world record last September. I flipped the tie for a marathon um as a pair that's incredible well, yeah nice one that's, yeah that's so awesome. 30, well done. 34 hours awesome. thank you um but this is this is how i helped build out my framework around compelling purpose i left the military i uh, had like i all in on coaching all my time was dedicated to helping everyone else then all of a sudden like it just hit me like what about me like i lost the brotherhood um of, of the military i started a business that then quickly come sat behind my desk wasn't allowed to leave my house so like it was a massive change for me all at once that I got sucked into and I was I was enjoying it and then all of a sudden one day it just hit me I was like what about me like what am I doing um, because I wasn't I was just training I was just pottering along no 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 intention no, no ambition um and then one of my old one of my old buddies who we used to be in a troop together, um, we had a consultation call for me to coach him. And he asked me, he said, I, I want to, I want to set a world record. I want to flip a tire for a marathon. Will you coach me? And, uh, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, got Guinness website up and I was like, mate, this is, this is a pairs event. And he said, uh, but I don't trust anyone to do it with me. So I'm gonna do it on my own. And I was like, well, I'll do it with you. Um, and that's how that was born. Um, and then like almost overnight, something switched in my head and I was so determined towards this goal. And like, it took 18 months for us to go from planning it to executing it and to stay that kind of driven and focused for that long. Um, it, but it felt relatively effortless because like, I was so compelled by flipping, doing something no one had ever done before. Um, and that, like having that North Star, having that thing that was so like monumentally challenging, all of a sudden like created that purpose, created that direction. And then as soon as it was done, so last September, it was over. Um, I then hit massive burnout, and massive post-goal fatigue up until Christmas, because then all of a sudden I had nothing again. And not only that, my body was absolutely exhausted because um, we worked out, we flipped over a million kilos each in 34 Jesus hours. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, was, it was an insane amount of work. So from then, from a central nervous system perspective, I was absolutely fried. Um, so then when it comes to actually like having this compelling purpose again, I couldn't. So like then all of a sudden I'm, I'm evolving my own, um, my own mental models. Because it's like, what, well, like you need a compelling purpose. You need this big, scary goal. I did that. I achieved it. Then all of a sudden I didn't have it. And the thought of setting one absolutely crushed me. So what I'm saying here is, it's about having that compelling purpose, knowing that once you hit it, there's going to be an element of, of a calm down. And then there needs to be some rest and recuperation time. And then we go again. And, and like, so now I'm back in that place where, I'm now buzzing again. And now I've got that compelling purpose again. Um, and that kind of, we just go around this cycle. And that's, in my opinion, how we maintain these high personal standards because we know that our professional standards come much easier because it's what we do. And that works with, um, that works with all standards, I guess. You know, the, the compelling purpose, it works with whether somebody is new to fitness and they're looking to do a mm. fight, coach to, you know, couch to 5K. And it's that compelling purpose that they want to do that 5k and uh, they're sitting on their sofa at the time and thinking, Oh, I've never done that before. It's probably really hard, but then they do it. And that sense of achievement is like, I've done that. They go back to sitting on the sofa again and go, ah, oh, what's, what's my purpose? 10k, yeah. 15k, 20k, hundred K, you know, just keep pushing the boat, keep pushing the boundaries. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. When you, when you were doing the tire flip, um, for a marathon which is ridiculously incredible achievement so well done the uh, was there a point when you were like i've bitten off more than i could chew here i've i'm in clip <laughs> especially yeah, when you're back so 
I I don't know what it was. There was not one point during it that I thought, um, I can't do this. It was it was so strange because it was so difficult. I'd never been so exhausted in my life. Like uh, the, the easiest way to describe it, because I had a lot of my military powers come down and support it because I needed a lot of witnesses and, and people on GoPros and all sorts of stuff. Um, and the easiest way to describe it to them, because th this was a question like we had, obviously it was 34 hours, so I had a lot of conversations. Um, the easiest way to describe it was like a long tap, long yomp, where you're just putting one foot in front of the other. Like, let's say you're inserting onto operational exercise, whatever. Like, you're just one foot in front of the other. You're carrying a house on your back. Everything hurts, but you're not broken. You don't actually need to stop, but you just want it to be over. And then you just keep going. And then all of a sudden you get to the end. And it felt like that. Like, there was no point where I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, I want to quit. And it's just like, right, just another flip, just another flip, just another flip. Um, and then before we know it, it was done. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was honestly, yeah. it, was, it was strange. I did, a, I did a charity event quite a few years back now where I climbed Ben Nevis seven times back to back uh, to nice. accumulate over the height of Mount Everest. Yeah. And so literally going down to pretty much sea level, which is like the, the, mm -hmm. the holiday camp type thing that's at the bottom of the, the mountain, going all the way up to the top, all the way down, all the way to the top. And after the third time, I was just like, what have I done? <laughs> what have I started? What have I put into motion? And my back had gone, my knees had gone, my neck was all like contorted because I, you know, just, it mm -hmm. wasn't the uphills, it was the downhills. I was ruining my knees and the bent over going the uphills was ruining my back. And, it, and it, at that point, I was like, I cannot stop. There's no stopping, you know, even if my bones come out of my shin or something like that, they, they, I just <laughs> got to keep going. There's no way if I'm going to stop this because I had this pride that I had to uphold. And then after it, despite it causing me so much pain and like it was absolutely knackering, I think I slept for like 48, you know, hours straight. And it was like that. I'd done something that I didn't think I was, you know, that I thought I was mm. capable of. I questioned my capability of doing it but then actually achieved it and finished it at the end. And then now it's like, what else can I do? What else can I put my body? What is my body capable of doing? Because it's a lot stronger than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's just like a, a human thing. People think they're fragile. They're not. It's like when we're talking about, you know, the boxer that you coach, you know, people think they're fragile, but there's other people just get punched in the face for a living. You're not fragile. You're tough. You've yeah. got this, you know, you've got this within you to, to, to achieve great goals. Yeah. And, and what you said before about someone whose compelling purpose might be running a 5k, like, and it, it's, it's, it doesn't matter where you are on that spectrum of, of, of difficulty. It's all relative to where we're all at. And it's expanding your own boundaries of what you know you're capable of every time. So it's, completing all those ascents of Ben Nevis, flipping a tire for a marathon. Then it's like, well, what else can I do if I can do that? Running a 5K, it's like, well, well maybe I can do three peaks challenge. Or, and then you do the three peaks challenge. Well, so maybe, I can, maybe I can run a marathon. Maybe I can do an ultra marathon. Then all of a sudden, like, we just, we just keep branching out and out and out. But that only comes when we, when we step outside of our comfort zone and we actually test what we're made of and we test what we're capable of. Because all the time we sit like the easy side of the line, we're not pushing anything. And actually life becomes, for me, quite mundane and quite boring because we're just going through the motions. We're just doing the, the daily grind of like of normality and mediocrity. Um, whereas for me, like humans will develop much further if we're all constantly just pushing that boundary, just stepping over the line of, of our comfort zone of what of what we think is possible and then like because if we were all to do that like humans would would achieve like exponentially more on the whole yeah yeah definitely 100 I mean, and it's easy to it's easy to sit uh, you know on the tv and eat junk food that's easy mm. like get yourself into a routine that is healthy and benefits you and actually gives other people inspiration like oh that person's you know you know, it could be an older person that's, you know, that person's in their fifties or whatever, but they've just done a marathon. Like it's achievable. Get, get out yeah. there and do it. Or at least attempt it. Cause you won't find out unless you give it a go. Um, 
I know, I know like I've probably been guilty of this in the past, but you know, I've said to myself, oh, I'm 35 now. I don't know if I could do the same things I used to do as, as I was younger. Um, what would you say to people that would, you know, might have that opinion of themselves? So, so for me, it's like age is a factor. We can't deny that. However, it's still the same process of like doing a little, like being consistent and accepting where you are now compared to where you used to be. So if we're talking about a 35 year old, that was an absolute animal in his twenties that now they're 35, they think I want to do what I did in my twenties. Like we have to, uh, we have to align ourselves with reality, accept where we are now and then still progress forwards, but just like disregard where we've been. If we're somebody that hasn't achieved much and now they got to 35 and they're like, oh, I haven't really done anything. We now we have no baseline to compare ourselves against because we haven't, we don't consider ourselves uh, physically accomplished back in our twenties. So now we're a blank canvas. Now it's like, okay, well let's again, make consistent progress day after day, week after week. And let's just see what we're capable of. Like there's, there's 60, 70 year olds achieving like phenomenal things. Like there's a, there's a guy, I think he might be in his eighties. That's doing all the Monroes. Like as we speak, he's going around and he's, he's, he's walking up every Monroe. Like, so, so for me, it's about accepting you are where you are, appreciating where you've been. If you used to be an absolute animal, but now where you are, like don't compare yourself to that just make progress from this point like draw a line in the sand make progress from today be better tomorrow yeah that's the one that's it isn't it that that blank canvas mm. of uh just take take yourself as you are because mm. yeah yeah you've, you've said it all there um i noticed that you've put down on your instagram just before we came came on to record this you'd put down uh you're doing a mental performance call uh is that is that something you want to talk about the mental performance call is that something you so that's actually me being coached. Um, so I, I have a number of mentors. Um, again, I think going from being in a military organization where you have everything around you and there, there's like literally everything's there for you, you can see whoever you need. And then to go self-employed and run my own business and then all of a sudden be on my own. It's like, well, actually, I, I need people that have been where I am and I need people to guide me forwards. So I, I have four mentors in, in different areas that I, I speak to and talk to, to one, so I don't make the same mistakes that they did, so I can almost shortcut that process. Um, and two, so I can, if I identify a hurdle, I can speak to somebody about it rather than just keep running into it and trying to fix it myself. Like I can, uh, I can problem solve. Um, so yeah, so mental performance call today is is just to make sure that like i practice what i preach so if i'm asking other people to step outside their comfort zones and i'm asking them to do this deep inner work i need to be doing it as well so that's what that is that's awesome yeah because that's uh we i suppose we are of a generation that is okay with you know looking at ourselves deeper and thinking right how can i better perform Whereas there may have been, mm. you know, older generations that kind of felt that they may, you know, I know it all. I know how to do this and how to do that. And they'll, they, they will fail. You know, the mm. ones that look at themselves, and analyze their, their business venture, their personal venture, their, you know, whatever it is, are the, are the ones that are going to be most successful. So that's, uh, I know quite a few people that do that. They have um, people that even, even external people from an organization will listen to the leader of an organization, give a brief to tell that leader, this is what you did right. This is what you did wrong. Maybe you should have tried this or should have tried that. Um, so yeah, you're on, you're on like a proper analytical journey of like analyzing other people, analyzing yourself, you know, and then, yeah. which is, which is the, the factor of that is if you are the best you and you, then you are able to train your clients to be the best them. Yeah, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it starts with personal standards every time like for for your business to thrive for your for your professional side to thrive it, we have to get our personal standards nailed first like if our if our food sleep movement mindset isn't isn't in alignment and we're not looking after ourselves 
then the stuff we're putting out, so whether you're coaching, leading, whatever, is, is just going to be suboptimal and it's not going to be the best version of you. Yeah. What, uh, what, uh, where, where can people find your work? Where's the best place to, you know, your Instagram and if you've got a, a website? Uh, so Instagram's the best place. So yeah, Louis Plumridge, Louis underscore Plumridge on Instagram. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. Best place, best place for people to find me, get in touch, whatever it is there. Cool. Yeah. So you're, you're just going to keep doing with the football team. Uh, have you got business developments that you want to do? You, how do you want to grow it? Is it or are you, are you happy to disclose yeah, so, that? Give away yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. So I, um, I run events for internally for my for my clients um so i I call my client base the brotherhood um and the first one i managed so it's something i was planning through covid and then covid kept knocking it back um and i managed to get the first one out in november and it's essentially like an out of comfort zone experience so i took i took 10 blokes up north to northumberland um they're not outdoorsy people they're office-based like quite corporate guys but sporty um i took them up north and it was i I said to them before 9 a.m before breakfast you're going to accomplish more in your day before you have breakfast so more than they normally would um so they were up at 5 a.m took them for a training session ice bath sauna took them out on a hike come back in um followed by a a bit of a, a mental performance training and then we'd have breakfast um and that was the start of the day and then the day kind of carried on like that so real long days um of climbing abseiling and and yeah it was it was class so i've got another one of them coming this year um but the demand's quite high so i may run a second and i'm looking at taking a bunch of the lads on the welsh 3000 as well which is i think it's a i think it's 40 forget the distance i think it's 30 miles over the 14 15 peaks of north wales in a 24-hour period um again because it's a sort of it's a sort of challenge that like the guys who i coach would love to accomplish but would never find the time or go out of their way to make it happen so i'm doing that for them nice yeah that's providing a service there uh it sounds really engaging Mm -hmm. as well uh you know getting them up at the there's times and getting them to achieve stuff that they've probably not done before getting out rock climbing and you know it's all mental health and physical well-being and all that good stuff mm-hmm. i noticed you put on your instagram as well um you've got a you're doing a podcast as well and um, what's the name of that and where can people find yes yes it's called taking action um and it's uh, a friend of mine an old client called christy um so to, we we basically um we, we're doing it in series so series one we we essentially broke down the fundamentals of high performance so she is a an occupational her- a therapist and mindset coach um and an armor strength conditioning high performance coach so together it works quite well because we're quite she she's much more empathetic than i am and and and, uh, and a little bit softer in her approach and how she does things she actually works with veterans um for combat stress as well so like she's quite attuned to to my way of thinking yeah it's quite good at putting her spin on things and then the series two which is coming out shortly um we've interviewed an, uh, a load of high performers um across different fields and yeah so and then we're today we're we're filming our own journeys um but yeah it's just it's, it's a podcast on on optimizing performance through just through simple action that's that's essentially a take-home message okay right yeah where, where do you where would people find that uh spotify and itunes okay cool uh yeah yeah happy days i'll uh, put the links on this episode to your whatever links you'd like me to put on to especially your instagram uh mm. and your podcast uh, thank you very much for coming on and discussing some really good points there about like how to better yourself as individuals is there anything else that you want to chuck in there before uh, we wrap it up no 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 it's good thank you yeah, thanks for coming on, Lewis. It's been an absolute pleasure. And good luck with the uh, the clients. Don't thrash them too much. <laughs> or do, you know, whatever works. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming on. Cheers, buddy. Thank you, mate. The opinions or views expressed on this podcast 
are solely of my own or the guests and do not represent the opinions or views of anybody else or the Ministry of Defence. Shishkabob, Shawshank Redemption, Chicago! You're out of there!